Did you know that Escape from Tarkov is a billion dollar franchise? For a game that is notoriously difficult, has a high barrier to entry, and is plagued with accusations of cheating and community drama, I'm sure you'd agree that's really impressive. It shouldn't come as a surprise then that companies like Bungie and Ubisoft and Tencent are all chasing this extraction style concept. But what exactly makes these extraction modes so appealing to players? What are their key features? And what challenges are involved in developing one? What core design aspects do these companies need to get right when developing their own extraction games? Well, I'm Andrew Chambers, and let's get stuck in. As the name suggests, an extraction mode game is all about well, extracting. Players deploy to a map where they explore, fight, and loot. Before the deployment timer expires, they extract, taking their collected items with them when they leave. This loot can be used to advance meta progression or increase power for the next deployment. Advancing the meta allows players to acquire tasks in the forms of missions or maybe shopping lists for crafting, things to collect when they're in their next deployment. If a player dies during a deployment, they will lose all of the items they brought in or even collected up to this point. This setback puts their progress back to where they were before deploying or even further back. Let's take a look at the history of extraction games. Escape from Tarkov was the first game to introduce a small group of players to an open world map where their objective was to loot and extract within a limited time frame. Drawing inspiration from games like DayZ, Arma, and other hardcore survival games, Tarkov condensed the gameplay experience from days or weeks into shorter, more digestible sessions. Throughout its extended development cycle, which included multiple alpha and beta stages, Tarkov has refined its gameplay experience by adding or removing features to reach its current state. Pretty much the model that every other extraction game follows, such as The Cycle, Hunt Showdown, and more recently games like Marauders and Dark and Darker. They offer their own versions of the game mode with different themes. While these projects are first-person shooters, there have also been alternative genre products like Hell is Others, which combines elements of Hotline Miami, HP Lovecraft, and extraction gameplay as well as Zero Sievert, a top-down extraction shooter heavily influenced by Tarkov. However, the game that has recently made the biggest impact and reached a much larger player base is the game mode DMZ in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This mode offers a scaled-down Tarkov experience where individual success is determined by completing missions and extracting, rather than engaging in all-out player versus player combat. What was actually really surprising about this mode is how well it was received by the broader Call of Duty community. Despite featuring the harsh death penalty commonly associated with extraction gameplay, this success has unlocked significant potential for the genre, as developers now have clear evidence that it is possible to bring this experience to a wider market. Of course, Bungie has been working on Marathon for many years, Ubisoft has Heartland, an extraction mode set in the Division franchise. It's also super likely that there are many other games in development by other developers. We just haven't heard about them yet. Before we get too deep into breaking out the core design elements of an extraction game, let's make one thing really clear, because it basically lays the foundation for everything else that we talk about here. Extraction games are looters, not shooters. Unlike games like Warzone or PUBG, where winning is achieved by killing enemy players, or even Destiny where loot is specifically rewarded for engaging in combat, many times the objective in an extraction game is to find and escape with loot. While it's possible to accomplish this by eliminating other players or maybe enemy NPCs, doing so carries a really high level of risk. For many players, a successful round in an extraction game may not even involve combat. By connecting such high value to loot, 
combined with the real potential of losing it all upon death, this creates the heart of an extraction game. With that in mind, let's talk about loot. One of the most obvious functions of loot in an extraction game is its connection to combat. Combat gear, such as weapons, armor, or consumables like healing kits, directly affect the player's base power, level, and competency. It can also define the player's playstyle. For example, using a sniper rifle will result in a dramatically different playstyle to wielding a shotgun. This gear can be obtained during gameplay, either from other players, NPCs, or occasionally from world spawns. Typically though, it can be purchased using in-game currency from vendors located in and unlocked by advancement in the meta progression. While combat gear is valuable, in an extraction game non-combat loot, trash items, such as say a wrench or a syringe, are as valuable as say a new armor vest, sometimes even more so. This value comes from how they're used in the metagame. Maybe you've been sent on a mission by one of the vendors to collect a variety of common items, or perhaps you're trying to upgrade your workbench in your base so you can craft a higher tier of ammunition for your weapon. By incorporating what many games would be considered these trash items or filler into progression or mission systems and requiring them to be found during deployment and for them to be lost on death, these items now carry real value, all dependent upon what the player's personal goals are. These two types of loot and how they're connected to power and progression really establish a player's motivation to explore the game space when they're deployed. Intrinsically, players want to increase their combat power so they have a higher chance to survive a combat encounter. To do this, they want to gain access to better combat gear. The source of this combat gear is very often from vendors found in the meta. In order to acquire this gear, players complete missions, unlocking higher tiers from vendors, and then use cash collected to purchase them. In order to complete these missions or earn cash, players often need to find and collect trash items. So it's important to understand how loot is distributed in the world as it drives a player's exploration. If the trash items spawn entirely at random, players would either feel increasingly confused and frustrated at the total randomness of it all, or they'd discover the most optimized locations to farm for these items in the most efficient way possible. To counter both of these, extraction games typically spawn trash in somewhat logical or relatable locations, yet with variable drop chances. Let's use an example to help us understand this. Say a player is looking for items of the medical variety. The most logical place for them to go to find these items would be a medical tent or a hospital, something healing related. Once there, they search the area, looking on shelves, inside crates, maybe on dead bodies that are scattered around the location. Each location has multiple possible spawn points for loot, and each of these points has a chance of spawning something. Because this is a medical tent, these locations have a higher chance of spawning something medical related, or at least on the medical loot table. It's worth noting that even though an item might be on a loot table, there's no guarantee it will spawn. Over time, players learn where on the map certain loot has a higher chance of spawning. Those areas then become hotspots that can kind of force players together, resulting in the opt-in combat. You can see how the relatable loot spawning combined with variable drop rate, creates this interesting game of finding a needle in a haystack. It also encourages replayability as the feeling of, well, I can just go in, play again, and there's another chance of finding it exists. This system actually has a lot of flexibility in it too. Increasing the spawn chance of items reduces how hard it would be for a player to progress with either combat power or their, their meta progression. Even if the lethality of combat is high, by increasing the spawn chance of items, the overall difficulty of the progression is reduced. Every extraction game also imposes restrictions on how much a player can carry during a deployment. 
Some do this using a Diablo type inventory system, simple limited slots, weight limits, or a combination of some of these methods. This restriction is crucial as it forces players to make hard decisions about what to carry and what to leave behind. It creates valuable tension and requires strategic decision making on the part of the player. There's nothing quite like the experience of finding a rare and valuable item like a Ledex in Tarkov and having to pick whether you want to take that out with you or the weapon that you just got from killing another player. On top of that, now you have it in your backpack, now you realize, oh man, I have to get out of here alive? It's pretty awesome. Missions create the initial motivation for players to start exploring, of course. But over time, they can also create this immersion for players and drive a deeper motivation for them. It's one thing to go into a map and find a wrench for an upgrade. It's another to find a doll that a little girl had to leave behind when she and her family had to escape. It's another thing when that little girl didn't make it out and the father asked you to recover it for him as a memory of her. See how that changes things? Similar to how loot spawns at reliable locations, but with a random chance, player spawn and extraction locations are also dynamic. When you enter a map, you don't know exactly where you'll spawn, and you don't know exactly where you need to go to extract. This creates an interesting moment at the start of every map where you need to establish your plan, possibly even reevaluate your goals entirely, resulting in a dynamic, emergent experience. Let's build on our early example from Tarkov to kind of explain this. One of your very first missions has you searching for Salewas, a medical kit. These need to be found in Raid, so you can't simply purchase them. Though these items have a small chance to be found anywhere on the map, they're most often found at locations which have medical relevance, such as hospital, emergency medical tent. Players now use this as motivation to decide where to go for their next deployment. They may know the forest map has a few good medical location spots. They may also have another quest to visit a location nearby the medical tents. So they decide to head there, complete that quest, and look for Salewas while they're deployed. Many factors impact their success in finding those Salewas, of course. How close did they spawn to the medical tent? Have other players already looted the tent by the time they get there? Did Salewas even spawn in this deployment? Did they maybe get caught in a firefight on the way to the medical tent and die or win? And they decide to loot the gear and get out. All these factors and more impact whether the player is able to complete a quest in a single deployment. This may sound frustrating and yeah, sometimes it is. What offsets this is that players were making progress towards other goals while they are searching for these items or even discover new emergent goals as they play. They may have other missions to complete. They may be collecting wrenches for an upgrade to their base. They may discover an unexpected, super valuable item. At the very least, whenever they deploy, they will earn experience for their character, which can unlock new missions or rewards. These kind of emergent goals happen basically every deployment in an extraction game. Whether it be the location you spawn in, or maybe encountering and winning a fight against some other players, or maybe even a lucky, unexpected item. Once these events occur, you may decide to completely abandon your plans and chase a different goal. It's not uncommon to end a deployment feeling really successful, yet having not achieved any of the goals that you set out to accomplish. By meta progression, I mean systems that exist outside of the moment to moment deployment gameplay. Meta is where systems like mission selection, crafting, trading, or NPC interaction and reputation often live. When you successfully extract, your return to these constructs is sort of a home base. While here, you do things like buy upgrades, turn in missions, or craft consumables. Tarkov's base is a fully realized environment where you can actually get in and walk around. You can even lift weights if that's your thing. The reason why this meta construct, whether it be interactive environment or simply a set of UI screens, is important is how it creates a greater purpose to what you do in each deployment. 
it establishes this longer term motivation that spans multiple deployments. Many games don't value this meta progression enough, but it's extraordinarily valuable. Without this, what you do in a deployment fundamentally lacks meaning. Beyond the combat being, you know, just good, there's a few factors to consider with a combat system in an extraction game, specifically situational awareness and engagement choice. Players need the ability to have high situational awareness. As discussed earlier, oftentimes the player's goal is to avoid PvP entirely and simply acquire an item and extract. In order to do this, they need to be able to detect where enemy players are and do what they can to avoid them. Systems like Spatial Audio, In-Game VoIP, or Hell is Others on-screen audio clues are good examples of this. Once engaged, the systems here should also support players being able to disengage should they choose to. It's valuable to create the ability for players to leave a fight that they don't believe that they can win. Many times in an extraction game, you'll find yourself in a situation that you just can't win, so you choose to play a distract and escape move rather than commit. Given that winning in an extraction game doesn't require you to kill other players, performing this kind of escape move makes you feel really clever. When I mention IP, I'm referring to the world and characters that the players interact with. In the case of Tarkov, it represents a post-war city in Eastern Europe where players take on the role of soldiers attempting to escape. In Marauders, on the other hand, it's a sci-fi universe centered around looting spaceships. Dark and Dark is a fantasy setting. Each of these IPs offer enough depth to captivate players with their stories and characters, while also providing immersive and appealing environments. Furthermore, the game mechanics are designed in a way that aligns with each IP. For instance, in the town of Hell is Others, it's logical to access it through an elevator. In Dark and Darker, magical portals are utilized, which fits perfectly with the fantasy setting. By ensuring these crucial gameplay elements are relatable, players can apply logical thinking to them, making it easier to understand and enjoy. Okay, so now that we have a solid understanding of what it takes to excel in an extraction game, let's talk about why they're so appealing. Many view extraction as a new and improved kind of battleground mode, which was introduced by games like PUBG and further popularized by Fortnite and Warzone. The major difference here is you don't necessarily have to directly compete with other players to achieve victory. This feeling of success without engaging in PvP combat is a significant draw. It actually makes the mode more accessible to players who like the idea of being in a PvP environment, but don't want to have to compete with other players to be successful. Additionally, Extraction offers a relatively self-sustainable and content light ecosystem. Once the initial development phase is complete and the game mode, meta, and combat systems are in place, adding new maps or weapons becomes relatively easy. Players create their own content loops by queuing up for servers. The progression and challenges associated with potential gear fear naturally extend the duration of players engaging with the content. In an environment where players consume content faster than developers can create it, this natural element of long-term progression supported by a game loop that includes built-in roadblocks like the loss of gear on death that's also accepted by players is really appealing. Furthermore, the game mode appears to be fairly adaptable to different genres. Games like Hell is Others and Zero Siva demonstrate the feasibility of this type of migration. Whether it's ultimately going to be successful or not, it remains to be seen. Overall, Extraction offers a potential blue ocean opportunity in a competitive gaming landscape which is dominated by existing genres. Of course, with any opportunity, there's going to be some risks. Traditionally, the audience for an extraction game expects a hardcore experience. Tarkov has set the tone for the level of complexity that players believe is necessary for an extraction game. Their systems, such as the damage model that applies different status effects like light or heavy bleed, 
or fractured bones, along with the medical consumables used to treat them, are extremely complicated. However, these systems are considered par for the course for many of these games. Fortunately, DMZ has shown that it is possible to simplify many of these complexities while still maintaining the extraction model. Additionally, the death penalty, which is core to an extraction game, can be extremely penalizing and poses a potential bounce moment for players. Players who are used to games like Destiny, where the penalty for death is extremely low, may expect a similar experience in, say, Marathon, only to be surprised when they lose all their gear they entered the match with. While it may be tempting to reduce this penalty to attract a wider audience, it's also extremely risky. Reducing the penalty could have a negative impact on the value of the death penalty itself. In addition to these considerations, the safety and security of players' loot in these games is often overlooked. We've seen the impact that cheats and hacks have had on games like Tarkov and The Cycle, especially during their launch windows. Cheating causes players to lose confidence in the value of the items they've worked really hard to acquire. If cheaters can easily duplicate items, then those items and the hunt for them will lose all value, especially when they're used as gate unlocks for progression. Something else which honestly has yet to be effectively solved is the Elder game experience. Once players reach the top end of combat progression, max out their meta progression, and complete all the missions, new content becomes scarce. Players often have to resort to more traditional PvP experiences, which is very different from what they enjoyed while leveling up. Some games attempt to solve this by regularly wiping players' progression completely. Although this helps to some extent, it's unclear how many players will actually stick around through multiple wipes. There likely is a better solution out there that's just yet to be discovered. With all that, what are the key takeaways? 1. It's a looter, not a shooter. Getting the loot and tension around extracting with the gear that you get is critical to the feeling of the game mode. The meta systems, the IP, the combat, they all work together to support this. 2. It could be the new battlegrounds. With its integral long-term progression granted by the flow of gear and loss, combined with opt-in PvP, Extraction Mode could well be the new battlegrounds. It's also possible that this can expand to new gameplay genres such as top-down, side-scrolling, and who knows. And three, there's still a lot of challenges to overcome. It's not easy to make one of these things. The reliance on loot and gear fundamental to this mode means that hacks and cheats have an even bigger chance to negatively impact the audience's belief that they're in an, a safe environment, and the Elder game experience is an opportunity to refine the experience over a longer period of time. So what'd you think? Extraction games, huh? Cool opportunity? Flight of fancy? What do you think? Add your comments below. What else is integral to like making these things work really well? What other challenges and risks are there? What are your favorite extraction games or what ones are you looking forward to? I can't wait to chat with you about it in the comments and learn what you think. For now though, like, subscribe, notification bell, all that stuff, again, helps the channel grow. Let's make this thing something we can engage in. Let's grow the community. For now though, have a lot of fun. Take care.